Hi, I'm Ufuma Ogaga and in this video, I am going to give you a quick and easy tip to tracking your grant and contract agreement coverage period and maybe performance uh, period when you're sending out those invoices and sales receipts. How can you do that for your nonprofit organization in QuickBooks Online? So we are using QuickBooks Online advanced subscription, which allows you to create unlimited custom fields. The key thing for you to remember is only three can be visible on a sales form at any given time. So here's what we're going to do to create a custom field. You're going to click on your, your gear icon. You are going to select custom fields under the list menu. So you're going to click custom fields and you can see on my screen that I already have existing custom fields. So I'm actually going to show you how to create a brand new one. So you're going to click add field and here you will enter the name of your custom field. So in this case, I am creating a custom field called fund coverage period, right? Because I want to be able to track when does this fund start and end? So I'm going to put that as my name. Under the data type, I'm going to select text and number. Why? Because you are going to type some text and you are going to add like numbers. You don't want to choose just a number option. Now, some people may decide to split the start date and the end date. I haven't found that to be really helpful. And typically that makes your reporting a little bit long. And with the way QuickBooks Online report works, you can only segment by one of these fields at any given time. You can't do like multiple segments in a nice, beautiful pivot, uh, table format. So choose the first option, um, category, because we don't want to be typing this every time religiously that we want to send out a sales receipt or an invoice. We are going to make sure that this field is permanently stable under our sub customer or uh, projects, which means the same thing. We're going to make sure that when we enter this fund coverage period, that we don't have to remember this religiously. It will just be there. It's going to pop up on our sales receipt and invoice so that we can see it. And it's going to show up on our reporting so that we can track this stuff successfully. All right. So we're going to choose the customer option as our category. And then I'm going to select all my sales forms. So sales receipts, invoice, estimate, credit memo, refund receipt. I am not going to turn on print on form. Why? Because this is more for our internal accounting system tracking purposes. The funder does not care about seeing this. Typically your funder is only going to care about seeing like maybe a performance period, meaning if you are billing your grants in reimbursement format, Typically they want to see that and maybe they want to see the PO number and maybe something else that they ask you to add as part of your invoice templates. So I'm not going to turn on print on form. Now keep in mind that I said it before, you can create unlimited versions of this, but you can only show and display three at any given time on your sales form. All right. So we're going to hit save and there is our fund and coverage period. Here is another one that I created. Now this is the performance, the period of performance, and it's still the same data type text and number. In this instance, I chose the transaction category because this is going to change every time I'm creating an invoice, every time I'm creating a sales receipt, I'm always going to apply a different period at every single time. So this one is changing and you will see and notice that I have selected this particular field to print on my sales form. All right. So that's the second one. Now, the first one that I created, we do want to go and apply it. So once you create the custom field, you have to go back to that sub customer or the project or the parent's customer. If you're not doing a sub, you have to go back and apply that custom field there so that it shows up going forward on every sales form that you create internally. All right. So we are going to go to our cells and then click on customer to get into our customer center. Here is my 2023 grant and I already created a different invoice earlier. So I am going to create another one. 
Um, no, before I create an invoice, we're going to make sure that the period coverage is applied to this fund. So you're going to hit edit to open up the customer profile that you want to edit, all the projects, all the sub customer. You're going to scroll all the way down. When you scroll all the way down, you will see that here's all your custom fields. So I have PO number, I have contract period. Uh, oftentimes that means the same thing as the fund coverage period. I've done too many of these. So I'm just going to copy the date range. Here is some tip when you're adding the date range of your fund coverage period. Do not put a comma. Do not put dashes. Why am I telling you to do this? Because QuickBooks Online, when you are trying to pull these fields on reports, it always displays weird with like an end uh, sign and a whole lot of crazy characters that doesn't make sense. So rule of thumb, when you are creating a custom field or when you're adding information to those custom fields, stay away from any of those weird special characters. Just do spaces, one, you don't don't this is not the time to worry about grammatic <laughs> issues and stuff like that all right so just put it the way that i just did it so if you're doing a date range put it the exact format that i have on my screens and make it short and simple because there is character limits on this and then you're going to hit save and close then you're good to go so when we create an invoice right so here's an invoice that i created you will see that here is my period of performance. This one is always going to change. So most funders will go, I need to see that as a separate field. It cannot be X, Y, and Z. Because you're working with a little bit of limitations with QuickBooks Online, you can leverage custom fields to really show your funders the extra information that they want to see to approve your um, money. All right. And then here is our coverage period. And again, you will see at the bottom where it says not printed on form. That is to signify to you that this is for your own internal organization tracking purposes. All right. Not printed in form. Your own internal organization tracking purposes. All right. So I got all of that. Now let's see how this particular custom field comes in handy when we run some sales reports. So we are going to run some sales reports. Now you can run uh, sales by customer summary, customer type, detail. So any pretty much any one of these sales reports will get you to the right thing that you need to see. So let's do the uh, sales by customer detail report. Now, while I'm in this report, you will be able to see here's all my custom fields that I created. So you'll be able to group and segment your your sales report any of your sales detail reports or the summary you'll be able to group it and segment it based on those custom fields that you have created so if you wanted to see like fun period coverage so we'll just do that right so to group it by those things that have that um and if i wanted to go more granular i can go change my columns to actually show the custom fields instead of doing the grouping by. So I'm just going to say show the custom fields at the end and you will see I have period performance. Now, why is it not pulling? So let's go back here. Uh, da, 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 da. We are going to click on this contribution and it is supposed to show, I probably did not co copy it over. So let's see. Huh. Oh yeah, I forgot to copy it over. So let's, let's do this. So we're going to put one there and we're just going to hit save and close and voila. So here's our fund coverage period. Here's our period of performance. This is super easy. You can run this report. You can export it out. So you can do some grouping just to group all the funds that are closing in 2023. You can see that information. All the funds that are closing in three years, you can see that information. All right. That is a quick and easy nonprofit accounting tip that is going to help you stay on track on your grant agreements and your contract agreements so that you don't miss those deadlines and those uh, and forget to send out those reports that are written, that are necessary for your organization to send out to make sure that you get more money from that funder.